Yes, hello again and uh, welcome to Classic Dirt Bike TV and uh, welcome to the great outdoors because it's good to be out and about again as we begin another brand new classic racing season as we've uh, made the journey from my hometown of Dunfermline in Fife to Angus and uh, to Forfar specifically here at Finavon Hill to hold round one of the Scottish Classic Motorcycle Racing Club's uh, 2022 Championship. Now, it's about uh, seven o'clock in the morning and it's, a <laughs> it's about uh, minus two degrees. I'm absolutely freezing my bollocks off here on the top of Finavon Hill. So I'm hoping that the sun gets up a bit higher in the sky and it gives us a bit more uh, heat, but we're in for a good treat today because the weather forecast is good and we have some uh, good racing classes for the pre-60s, pre-68s. Uh, the pre-75s are brand new class, of course, the pre-1989-1252 strokes, and of course, those uh, big bikes of the pre-1984. So I hope you'll uh, continue to uh, tune into my YouTube channel to see all the racing action uh, from uh, this round one event. So we're going to have a quick look around the paddock just before we get down to the racing action so uh, let's just uh, head back to the paddock and take a look at some of those very nice bikes who have uh, turned up to race at this round one event here at Finavon Hill. And so our first uh, bike from the Scottish Classic round one uh, paddock is John Porteous's 1982 250 Husqvarna, another nice looking Swedish classic here and uh, John's going to be racing this bike in the popular uh, pre-1984 class uh, with the club. Now naturally I'm not going to show you every single machine that took part in this round one event on the day but we will uh, pick out uh, one or two examples from around uh, the paddock. But uh, back in the day uh, these reed valve 250 Husky motors were uh, quite quick for a 250 and uh, John's bike here is not a fully original bike because it does have a replacement exhaust system and a fuel tank that's been taken uh, from a different model uh, of uh, Husqvarna. But if you're uh, familiar and up to speed with your Husqvarna uh, fuel tanks then uh, you'll know exactly uh, what year of bike that this uh, fuel tank's been taken from, so there's probably no need for me uh, to tell you any different. Uh, but apart uh, from the aforementioned replacement uh, bits and pieces on this bike, this is still a good uh, solid twin shock uh, race bike. And if you continue to view my videos here on Classic Dirt Bike TV, you can see all of the bikes featured here in action on the track uh, when I post all the racing videos from this uh, Scottish Classic Round 1 event which will be my very next posting here on uh, CDB uh, TV. But another uh, very good looking uh, 250 Husky belonging uh, to John uh, Porteous and uh, hopefully uh, John will go on to attain some very good results on this bike uh, throughout the 20. 22 classic uh, racing season and so as we continue our walk around the paddock next up we have another very nice uh, vintage classic and this is Ian Ward's uh, nice old uh, BSA and this is just one of the two bikes that Ian's uh, brought along to this round one event here at uh, Forfar but again another machine that's uh, very typical of the kind of bikes that uh, take part in pre-1968 scrambles these days with uh, the old uh, BSA frame and four-stroke motor and of course uh, plenty of that lovely nice shiny alloy on those mudguards uh, fuel tank and uh, side panels. Now the forks on Ian's BSA are actually the entire front end that he swapped from his other race bike which is an old uh, Villiers 250 machine and then Ian then of course took the front end from his BSA and then bolted it on uh, to the Villiers. Now the reason for that swap was a bit unclear but I expect that uh, each bike worked a bit better with the other bikes uh, suspension uh, fitted onto it. 
But these old 1960s BSAs, as I said, are the bread and butter of the pre-68 scramble scene and when you attend these kind of events you'll surely see quite a few of these dotted around uh, the racetrack. But uh, another very nice old classic, that's Ian Ward's uh, number one uh, race bike, his old BSA. So uh, next up, this is Ian's other uh, classic racer, and this is his uh, 1966 250 Villiers. Now, before everybody gets all hot and bothered thinking that this is nothing like an original uh, Villiers machine, that's because it's not, and uh, it's because it's a bit of a mishmash of uh, various other Villiers bits and pieces, and even uh, this motor is a combination of parts from the uh, 32A and 36A Villiers engines. But uh, Ian maintains that his old Villiers is very much a work in progress type of machine as he's always improving or changing parts uh, just to try and help the overall handling and running uh, of the bike and Ian admits uh, it's maybe not the fastest bike on the planet but uh, so far its reliability has been uh, impeccable. But as I said, these are the forks and front end from Ian's BSA bike that he swapped over. And uh, he did tell me that the bike really felt good with these BSA forks fitted onto his uh, Villiers. But uh, Ian is quite an accomplished engineer and uh, he did manufacture a lot of the parts on this uh, Villiers bike and this alloy box section swing arm is just one of the uh, bits and pieces that Ian made for his classic uh, Villiers racer and at first glance it does look like an old British made motorcycle part but uh, there's certainly no denying uh, the welding and engineering has been expertly done on uh, this part of the bike. But uh, once again these old uh, British uh, Villiers machines are uh, not that common as vintage race bikes go in these modern times, although uh, the old AJS Stormer is still uh, quite popular at uh, classic events. But uh, Ian's particular Villiers uh, 250 here is certainly unique with its uh, handmade uh, swing arm and multi-component Villiers motor and of course that uh, Suzuki fuel tank.
Now this next featured bike is uh, quite a rare find and this 1984 YZ250 Yamaha is uh, Billy Porteous's uh, new uh, race bike which he just recently acquired as an import uh, from the USA. Now other than having the front and rear suspension serviced and sorting out a few other little niggles with the rolling chassis, Billy's uh, never touched the motor at all and uh, this round one event here at Forfar will be the very first time that the bike's been back on the track in uh, quite some time. Now the engine, as you know, is a 250 liquid-cooled uh, reed valve motor with a 5-speed gearbox. And although uh, this is a very quick look at this machine in this video, we will be doing a more in-depth look at this bike very soon in a future posting here on my channel. So make sure that you uh, catch uh, that particular video. Now, when Billy first purchased this bike, it was fitted with a pair of forks from a 1985 YZ250, which had the disc brake at the front, and so uh, Billy then uh, put the bike back to its original uh, 1984 forks and uh, drum brake. But a twin leading shoe front uh, drum brake here, as you can see, which usually had more than enough stopping power to slow down uh, this relatively light uh, 250. But again, a good uh, drum brake again on the rear of uh, our bike with uh, Yamaha's uh, tried and tested alloy box section monocross rear suspension uh, system. But for 1984, this little 250 motor was uh, pretty awesome and it could certainly pack a punch for such a small compact uh, 250. But for sure, a rare little bike and you certainly don't see many of these 84 250s on the tracks these days still uh, taking part in classic racing. Although, as I said, uh, look out for a more comprehensive uh, look at this bike in a future uh, video that I will be posting here on Classic Dirt Bike uh, TV. And so next up, it's uh, Andrew King's Husqvarna AJS. And uh, this is a Husqvarna frame that Andrews uh, then slotted in an AJS uh, two-stroke uh, motor into. Now, we've already featured this bike in detail here on uh, CDB uh, TV, so uh, check it out uh, to hear just how it was all uh, put together. Now, this bike is uh, one of two AJS-powered uh, machines that Andrew races, and the other is uh, this uh, AJS Stormer that belongs to uh, Charlie Robertson, but Andrew uh, races it on Charlie's uh, behalf. And this is a very quick bike, and look out uh, for it in action on the track when the racing videos uh, from this event are uh, posted. But as you know, these old 1970s AJS Stormers are uh, very competitive machines for their time because they did have a super light steel chassis and uh, for its day a decent two-stroke engine and uh, you can see both of Andrew's uh, racers strutting their stuff in the following uh, racing uh, videos. Okay, so we're going to finish off this paddock walkabout by taking a look at uh, John Fleming's uh, 3L Nori Patty uh, CZ uh, Twin Shocker, which is not, of course, an original machine from back in the day, but is a new interpretation of one of these iconic uh, Czechoslovakian uh, race bikes. Now, the bike's chassis was built by uh, motorcycle frame building legend Harry Stitt, and uh, the motor has been all prepped and tuned by Nori Patti at 3L uh, Developments. But this featured CZ bike is uh, now quite typical of the kind of uh, hybrid machines that we're now seeing at Classic and Twin Shock events these days, as there are so many uh, re-engineered spare parts that you can now buy for these bikes direct uh, from the Czech Republic, because as you're already aware, uh, brand new original parts for these bikes are not really that easy uh, to come by uh, nowadays. But there are some very nice uh, trick parts uh, fitted on to this uh, CZ machine and 
uh, we may uh, take a much closer look at this bike in a future video here on uh, Classic Dirt Bike TV. So make sure that you uh, look out uh, for that. Now again, the bike has a custom made alloy fuel tank that's been specifically designed around that Harry Stitt uh, chassis and uh, many of the bike's other fixtures and fittings are all designed to make the bike uh, much more user friendly on uh, the racetrack. But of course, uh, you'll be able to see this bike in action on the track in a forthcoming video here on my channel when I post the racing footage from this event, which will be my very next video here uh, on my channel. But you have to admit, it's certainly a very uh, nice looking machine. Now in this picture here, you can see John's bike and its sister machine with Archie Baird there on the left and uh, John on the right. And you can uh, look out for uh, both of these bikes uh, taking part in this round one event here at Finhaven uh, very soon. So anyway, I hope you did enjoy this very quick walk around the Scottish Classic Round 1 paddock here at Finhaven. And don't forget uh, to subscribe or return to my channel to see all of the racing from this fantastic racetrack here at Finhaven Hill. <laughs>